Welcome to Great Chefs of the World, a culinary survey featuring premier chefs from around the globe. The appetizer this time comes from Vienna, Austria. Reinhard Guerra, executive chef at the Corso at the Opera Restaurant in the Bristol Hotel, offers two seafood favorites, lobster and salmon in an inventive sandwich. Salmon reappears in the entree from the restaurant Akia Sta Coco in Santiago, Chile. Coco Pacheco, the exuberant chef owner, creates a dish rooted in Chilean history. Finally, dessert is prepared in Hawaii. Mark Hetzel, pastry chef at the Four Seasons Resort Maui, offers a deep dish coconut cream and banana pie. In Vienna's first district, the 100-plus-year-old Hotel Bristol offers fine dining at the Corso at the Opera Restaurant. Executive chef Reinhard Guerra was voted Austria's Chef of the Year, and the restaurant earned a Michelin star. Here's his starter, a salmon lobster sandwich where the salmon is served sushi-style. We call the Hummer, circa uh, a medium-sized lobster is boiled in water seasoned with sea salt, fresh dill, and whole caraway seeds for one to three minutes. Frische Dille. Und etwas Kümmel. Wie gesagt, schön zubariert, die Gräten gezupft. Wir schneiden jetzt noch die letzten Berühren weg. Filet of salmon is thinly sliced. Japanese gourmets reportedly have a high regard for Chef Guerra's cuisine. This admiration appears to be reciprocated by this homage to sushi where extremely fresh salmon is marinated and eaten raw. The salmon is marinated in fresh lemon juice, sea salt, olive oil, and freshly ground black pepper. Mehr Salz. Und kalt gepresstes Olivenöl. Inzwischen ist unser Hummer schon fertig. Okay, wir brechen jetzt den Hummer aus. Wir trennen zuerst. The lobster is broken apart with the meat from the claws reserved for presentation. Mit einer Schere wird dann der Schwanz ausgebrochen. Und nun wird der Hummer geschnitten. Es ist wichtig, dass der Hummer noch etwas glasig ist. Ja? Man sieht das hier ganz genau. The lobster should have a glassy look. It is then chopped into a tartar. So, 
gewürzt wird, das Ganze jetzt noch einmal mit Zitronensaft. The lobster is also seasoned with fresh lemon juice, sea salt, olive oil and freshly ground black pepper. Olivenöl. Und schwarzen Pfeffer. Wir kommen jetzt zum Anrichten. Am besten ist, wir verwenden einen Teller, der auch etwas vorgekühlt ist. So. Den Lachs unten hin. Das Hummer da da drauf. Soll ein richtiger Sandwich sein, der üppig mit Hummer. Und hier haben wir Tomatensaft gepressen. Frisch gepressen. Fresh tomato juice is drizzled on the salmon lobster sandwich. Etwas von dieser frische äh, in dieser Herbe der Tomaten. And the dish is garnished with fresh basil, black pepper, olive oil and lobster coral. Dann macht sie einen Pfefferrand. Hier haben wir Basilikumöl. Und das hier ist das Hummerkorei. Schauen wir jetzt noch herum. Das verleiht dieses Gericht eine gewisse Würze. So. Mehr Salz. Es gibt ja Menschen, die es sehr äh, scharf lieben. Es gibt Leute, die es würziger wollen. Sozusagen. Jetzt gehen wir noch die Scheren dazu. Coco Pacheco Seafood Restaurant in Santiago gets right to the point with the name. The ebullient owner chef's personality pervades the operation. He's written cookbooks and also teaches cooking classes in a small studio behind the restaurant. His entree is a stuffed salmon cooked over an open fire. For this demonstration, Silviana Echeveres will translate for the chef. Recién sacado. Nova. Um, this is uh, cancato fish on fire. This is a prehistorical dish. Uh, it's been prepared for many years. Uh, sometimes, Sacar la cabeza. first thing you take off the head. Esto es para el gato. Yeah. That's for the cat. The fillets are removed, trimmed with the skin left on. Mm, qué belleza. Beautiful, beautiful, the color. The stomach is the, the belly, that's the greasy part of the salmon. After the belly fat has been removed, pin bones are extracted. These small bones are best removed with needle nose pliers. Your finger will tell you where the spine is. You move it and pull it out of the fish. La veta del pescado, es decir, Forward. la dirección Pull de la it. carne. Nunca yeah. al revés, mm -hmm. porque si no, quebraría la espina. Le quedaría la espina adentro. The fillets are put onto a hinged folding grill and the salmon is sprinkled with lemon juice. 
Then it's seasoned with pepper and shown here Hawaiian salt, which picks up the color of Hawaiian clay. He brought it from Hawaii. The first stuffing ingredient is sausage from South Chile. Very thinly sliced, good quality. This is like cooking a pizza. Then thinly sliced tomato, chopped garlic, and thinly sliced onion. Now some fresh oregano. Softened butter is added. Some butter. Finally, a soft cheese similar to mozzarella is added. Monterey Jack can be substituted. It has to be a creamy, soft cheese. And again, thinly sliced. If you have a special machine to cut it, it's better. Now the, we put the other side on it. Now the worst part of the recipe, sewing the halves together with cooking string. I'm going to see if it's uh, easy to sew it. If, if, if it's too hard, we're not going to do it. We're trying, we'll try to take only the flesh of it. Not the, the skin. The skin is too hard. The recipe says that you have to saw it. That's why I'm trying to do it. The chef quite sensibly sews only one side of the packet together. The hinged grill is closed, and owing to the size of the fish packet, will have to be wired closed. Meanwhile, giving his all, or at least part of his backyard, to Chilean history, the chef puts the concato over the coals. Periodically, the salmon will be basted with a combination of fish stock, wine, garlic, oregano, and salt and pepper. The sauce. Thank you. This is a... You have to dress it with uh, some wine, garlic, and some herbs. The important is that it doesn't get dry. It's fun to do it because it's uh, like uh, going back to the past. It reminds me of my uh, good old friends, Ilitches, Indians. The chef estimated cooking time at 25 minutes. But as is always true with outdoor cooking, there are a number of variables at work. In this case, it took more like 45 minutes. Some more dressing. Cooking is accelerated with that precise cooking tool, a hammer. We will lower a little bit to, to get it. That is automatic regulation. Mm. 
malamang. Casi siempre cuando está listo, el queso empieza a, a chorrear. When it's uh, almost uh, ready, the, the cheese starts melting. Ese es un síntoma de que ya está casi listo. Uh, that's the way you know it's almost ready. At the time of taping, the pastry chef at the Four Seasons Resort on Maui in Hawaii was Mark Hetzel. He's a CIA graduate who went on to further pastry work in Paris, then to the Four Seasons Inn on the Park in Houston. Here's his good-looking deep dish coconut cream banana pie, featuring peanut nougat and chocolate-coated bananas. We're going to make a um, banana cream coconut pie. And we've made a sugar dough that we've put on the bottom of this uh, entremet circle. The dough is approximately an eighth inch thick. And we've rolled out a strip of dough, rolled it back together, and we're going to unwind it inside the buttered ring, making sure that the edges on the bottom connect. And just continue to unravel it until we've gone all the way around. We're going to gently push down to make a good seal. Being careful not to press the sides very hard because we don't want to make them too thin. If we run short, we can cut an extra piece and just simply connect that in. Bake at 350 until golden brown. After the shell is cooled, it's coated with melted chocolate. After the shell is baked, we're going to brush the inside with melted chocolate. We can use the same glaze as we use to dip the bananas in. We're going to then take some peanut nougat, which, is, which has been cooled, and we're going to chop it. And we're going to use that as a garnish in the bottom of the pie shell. One of the two fillings is a caramel cream made by combining caramelized sugar with sweet beaten egg whites. When the caramel reaches the proper temperature, we're going to slowly pour it into the whipping egg whites. This is the process for making what is called Italian meringue. After all the sugar is incorporated, the chef continues beating until the meringue is cooled. A second component for the caramel cream involves combining beaten egg yolks with a sugar water syrup. We're going to, as in the first step, pour it into the whipping egg yolks. Then the meringue and yolk mixture are combined. You want to be certain that everything is properly mixed. After incorporation, it is added to whipped cream. We 
want to fold a little bit more gently, making sure that the whipped cream does not break. The caramel cream is the first layer of the pie. We'll fill the shell about halfway. The coconut cream is started with heavy whipping cream. To it will be added a coconut syrup, which is used to hydrate gelatin leaves. Also, flaked fresh coconut and coconut milk are added. The mixture is incorporated. We will then pour this on top of our first layer. Chocolate dipped finger bananas go inside the pie. And we're going to dip them in the chocolate glaze. This is the same glaze we brushed the shell with. Let them drain slightly and leave them to cool. For the next step, we're going to take the bananas and place them into the center of the pie. After the bananas are set, whipped cream fashioned into a dome shape finishes the pie. You can make the whipped cream into a dome and then with a spatula, we can garnish the top of the pie as such. Chill the pie for three to four hours. For our final step, we'll top the rest with the more of the peanut nougat. 